Good luck. The answer and the name of today's winner will be posted on our website next week. Now, our first guest is probably best known for his role as the straight-talking cop in the hit drama Dempsey and Make Peace. This series not only brought him into the living rooms of 12, 20 million viewers, it also brought him love in the form of his co-star, now his wife, Glynis Barber. Tonight, he starts a tour as narrator of the Amadeus Project, a commemoration of the 250th anniversary, I'm doing very well, of Mozart's birth. Uh, would it help if I told you I had two different contact lenses in today and I'm no. struggling slightly? <laughs> OK, if you could just come a little bit closer, it would really help. Uh, this weekend, he makes a guest appearance. That's you sitting at home. Uh, <laughs> thank you, you can stop. Uh, this week, he makes a guest appearance on Saturday's episode of Casualty. I'm going to stand here until you answer me. Right then, kid. What? You walking out on her? Because she's pregnant. You want to ask her why I'm leaving? She trusted you. No. Get out of my way, kid. You knock her up. No, I didn't. And then you walk away. I wouldn't touch her if you paid me. <laughs> What'd you do? Huh? I'm sorry. You I cut don't... your hand? I didn't, I didn't mean to. Oh, my. Ah! Ah! What have you done? Come on! Get off me! Will you please welcome Michael Brandon? <laughs> Before we ask you about your sore mouth that you got there, you had a little bit of a hobble coming down the stairs there. How's your foot? Yeah, I see that cast. Well, you actually didn't see it in the shot, but I was wearing the cast because I actually have a broken foot. Mm -hmm. So when the producer called me, would I do casualty? And I said, well, am I a patient? And um, he said, no, you're, you're the boyfriend of a doctor. I said, is she an orthopedic surgeon? <laughs> and they said, why would that matter? I said, because I have a cast on my foot and it's the only way I can do it. So I said, I'll, I'll call you back. And they worked it in. So what it's about is um, AIDS Awareness Day, it's December 1st, and this show is about um, this doctor and, there's, and the blood if, that I was concerned about on this kid's yeah. hand and when he hit me in the mouth. So, uh, you know, serious stuff. So how did you break the foot? I took my son sailing uh, in the summer. Glynis was doing Emmerdale, so I wanted him to have some kind of holiday. So um, this tour I'm doing, the Amadeus Project, uh, the Guy Barker's manager, John, owns this old wooden Turkish sailboat. So I took it for a week, and after two nights of like looking at the stars, it was the closest thing to camping. You know, it, it was oh, sort of a really? great Wob bonding thing. Camping. You know, it was just you know, we were shooting stars, and you know, it was steady. It was pretty steady. And then the third night, you know, kids all they want is internet and ice cream. So I went at the dock, right in this little village. I stepped off the boat and crack. Ouch. I mean, that was it. There was no, you know, they call it the dancer's break, fifth metatarsal, I think Wayne Rooney. Mm. Oh, okay. And it takes forever. But I'm, I'm out of the boot today, and I, I think two more weeks um, You're going to be all right. Is today the first day you've managed to put a shoe on? Well, yeah, I put it on. I'm, I'm the whole city without the boot. I usually take the boot if I'm, you know, going to do anything, if uh -huh. I, because I'm afraid to be around people. Sure, in case anyone steps on your foot. It's like a magnet, you know? Mm. It is. Yeah, so the, so. the live show, there's no dancing then for you? No, well, one foot dancing or chair <laughs> dancing. I, you know, I'm good <laughs> so. No, you're a narrator, aren't you? The yes, in, in yeah. Amadeus, yes. Yeah. It's the, uh, well, it's a takeoff of um, Mozart's magic flute. Only instead of Prince Tomino, it's Bobby Tomino, you know, who's a, a trumpet player from the Bronx. The music is phenomenal. The album is amazing. Guy Barker and these 15 musicians, they come around from all the world. They're the best jazz orchestra. So it's imagine. jazz linked with Mozart? It's all jazz. It's what? just every concept of jazz. Guy wrote this, you know, this whole composition. And it's sort of like, you know, and sort of, if you can imagine yourself in a club, you know, it's like, I met this guy once, a trumpet player. He was playing for tips in a bar when I met him. You know, and the thing is, the, and it's like, so the bartender told me, this guy had the best chops in the city, and he started, da -da -da -da, and it's just, you know, a guy and the rest of the band, they just take you on a ride. He sounds amazing. Yes. And it, it's all interwoven with this narrative written by Rob Ryan, you know, a crime novelist, mm -hmm. you know. And so it gives you a story. So while the jazz is going on, you have images of the prince to meet, you know, and the princess is, a, you know, a, a, a cigarette girl, mm -hmm. you know, and the three ladies in waiting are three ladies in wanting, and the queen of the night's there, madam, you know, and, but it's... 
Sounds Great like stuff. us four. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, tonight we're uh, in um, Barnstable, the Queen's Theatre. Lovely. Situation. And then every night we go, you know, to uh, Sheffield and Nottingham and York. Uh, and then to Ronnie Scott's. And is it rather more intimate venues that you're playing? Because it sounds like the kind of thing that would work better in small, mm. smoky, atmospheric bars. Well, in a way, yeah. But we, we've had, you know, Full House or Ronnie Scott's, we did a uh, couple nights sold out. It was just packed. And it was just, yeah, but it, all the places. We're doing the University of York. I mean, it's like, but all the venues, yes, the more intimate, the better. Because, you, you know, we're sitting, sometimes we're sitting with people all around. And, uh, you know, it's just, Really, you've got a great voice for it. I mean, even that little bit that, that yeah. you did there, you oh. get drawn in right, right away. He's, you're good at it. He's, he's an actor. Yeah, he's, he's very good. <laughs> well, actually, I've been thinking about radio. I'm going to do radio yeah, really? after yeah. the new year. I'm going to have a, a city talk. I'm going to do um, what kind of stuff? Talk. Like just talk. What talk. Is, yeah, you know, I, I got I got to rant today. and rave. I got to get it out. You know, it's like you talk about uh, neighborhoods. You know, I'm from Brooklyn. Yeah. Mm. Neighborhoods. You know, the hood was the whole thing, and. The common denominator of the city and, and, and family and friends was the stoop because people used to hang out on the stoop. What's that, the like stairs the up to the, like a landing mm. in the front of the house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because everything was sort of two stories then, you know, and uh, you'd go up and that's where you, you, on the summers, hey, you're talking to the neighbors, you know, and uh, passing food over, you know, and the kids were playing, you know, bouncing the ball off stoop ball, you know. We played outside. I remember you were saying that. Mm. Yeah, I used to play game, Ring Olivio and Johnny on the Pony and... It was like life, you know, it was outside. You make it sound you know? so romantic. Yeah. And now you live in London. I... 23 years. Mm. Have you really lived here that long? You can tell from my accent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems such a shame. You've been in London 23 years and we've never bumped into each other before. It's been I... lovely to have you on again because we've run out of time. Oh, no. Um, but it's Michael Brandon, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. OK, we'll take a break, but on the way, we delve into the murky origins of the word jump. Vaccine? <laughs>